planet Earth. As far as we know, the only place in the universe where life is found. The blue-green marble that we call home. We don't know exactly how life started, but we do know it was a chaotic mess. Different forms of life emerged, adapted and were destroyed again and again and again in a cycle that lasted for almost 2 billion years. Then around 1.56 billion years ago, the continents began to shift, multicellular life emerged and walked on land, created the dinosaurs, killed them, then made us, almost killed us multiple times, forced us to adapt, forced all other animals to adapt and created the life that we know today. But we also know that the life we know today wasn't always the way it is now. In fact, life was completely different millions of years ago. But life couldn't have just popped out of nowhere. It has to have a story, right? Have you ever looked at your hands and wondered, why do I have five fingers? Have you ever wished for six? Or wondered why you don't have three? Well, there is a reason. Yeah. Have you ever watched a documentary and wished that you had an ability that one of the animals had? Have you ever walked barefoot in the jungle, wishing you had hooves like a horse to protect your nicely well-groomed, taken care of feet? Imagine this, you're a short giraffe and you see an acacia tree. Acacia trees have a lot of thorns, so the only leaves that you can get to are at the top of the tree. Now you being short, can't reach the top of the tree. But then this bigger, taller giraffe comes along, and of course, he gets the great food. Now you're left sitting there, a short giraffe, with no hope of getting those fresh acacia leaves. So you're probably going to starve to death and die. And obviously, no living thing wants to starve to death. But since you can't reach those sweet, sweet leaves on top of the acacia tree, you're not gonna make it very far. Meanwhile, that taller giraffe can reach for the top of the tree and get all the nourishment he needs. So, you're dead. But the taller giraffe, he's successful. He goes around, finds a mate, propagates his offspring. And what do you know, four million years later, all giraffes are super tall. His height just might be a fluke, but you're dead and he's alive. So who are you to talk? And for all we know, that taller giraffe might be the ancestor of every giraffe we know today. Basically how it works is, the taller giraffe gets more food. The more food he gets, the more likely he is to survive. The more likely he is to survive, the more likely he is to have babies. And the more likely he is to have babies, the more likely his genetics are to be passed down from generation to generation, making every single giraffe born from his lineage so tall. <laughs> Like, if you've seen giraffes in real life before, you know what I'm talking about. They're huge. By the way, the same logic also applies to tongues. The giraffes with the longer, thicker tongues are more likely to get more leaves. And so, you get the idea. The process I just explained is called natural selection. You might have heard that in a fight, the guy with the bigger stick wins. Well, in a fight with nature, the giraffe with the longer neck wins. Natural selection is what moulds animals into what they are now. What we see is the current, latest version of whatever animal edition that you're looking at. And that's the same reason I don't have hooves or six fingers, because they weren't necessary in human evolution. It's important to understand natural selection to understand evolution, because the process that allows a giraffe to get a longer neck over like two million years is the driving force behind how a fish or a bacteria can grow into a salamander that turns into a monkey that turns into a human over billions of years. Natural selection is basically the driving force of evolution. Around 530 million years ago, during the late Cambrian, we saw the emergence of the first fish. They were omnivores, eating whatever they could find but soon evolved into predators. Over the next few million years, evolution gave rise to some of the fiercest predators this planet has ever seen, like this Dunkleosteus that crushes prey between its massive jaws. 
But even though this animal emerged much later than the fish you saw in the previous clip, you can see the similarities. The four pectoral fins, the dorsal fins, the large powerful muscular tail, the bony head. That is how evolution works. You can see that the traits that make animals better are the ones that stay predominant. We know that the first land animals were very similar to salamanders. They had weak arms and didn't move around much, but they were still quite different from anything we can see today. And then began the dominion of the dinosaurs. High levels of oxygen and a much hotter climate allowed animals to thrive and reach massive sizes. The dinosaurs that we know about today are only a fraction of the ones that existed at that time. We have no idea how many there were, but we do know that they ruled the planet. Every landmass, every ocean, every untouched island and even the sky were dominated by these amazing reptiles. The beauty of the animals of the past lies in their mystery. Remember, we know absolutely nothing about the behavior of dinosaurs, how they interacted, or how they lived. We only know what the bones show us. Through natural selection, dinosaurs with traits best suited to their environment thrived. These traits, the long necks for reaching high leaves or sharp claws for hunting, were passed on to offspring. Over millions of years, this constant selection led to a remarkable diversification. The dinosaur family tree branched out, with long-necked giants evolving alongside vicious predators, each perfectly adapted to their niche in the prehistoric world. The amazing thing is, dinosaurs ruled the world for 165 million years. For context, We've only been around for 200,000. What a lot of people don't understand is how life went from these scaly, amazing but frightening beasts to the hairy flesh bags that are the mammals that we know today. We're not 100% sure it was an asteroid, but whatever it was, the dinosaurs are dead. Yet, life presses on. Again, you can see natural selection and evolution at work. The dinosaurs that could fly at the time were the ones that managed to escape the worst effects of whatever catastrophe caused their demise. And the modern descendants of dinosaurs are birds like this cassowary. We're not exactly sure how mammals survived the catastrophe, but the theory goes that it was a combination of the fact that they were warm-blooded and that they were really small and could survive for long durations without food. When the dinosaurs were around, there was so much competition that mammals were never able to evolve out of their small rat-like states. But as soon as the dinosaurs were gone, mammals immediately jumped in and filled the niches that the dinosaurs once dominated. Taking over the land and the sea, mammals dominated the world. The oceans filled with cetaceans like dolphins and prehistoric whales, while the land had rodents evolving into all kinds of things. And then came our ancestors, Catherines. People say that we evolved from monkeys, but that's not exactly correct. We evolved from apes, which are quite different from monkeys. In fact, gorillas are apes. The simple way to differentiate is monkeys tail, apes no tail. We're apes. 
And so, from our common ancestors, chimpanzees, millions of years of evolution created the modern humans we know today, Homo sapiens. And this process of natural selection continues even now in a remarkable story of adaptation and change. We don't know where it's going, but we do know that the process of evolution will drive the course of life for millions of years to come. And though we may not look a lot like our Turula cousins, if you look through the fossil record and the history of life on Earth, you can see evolution at work at a remarkable scale. From the single cell life that first stirred in the oceans to the giants of the savanna or the insects of the forest floor, life on Earth has taken up many forms, the forces of natural selection and evolution driving their creation. The messy soup that was early Earth gave rise to the most beautiful display of nature the universe has possibly ever seen. So, what do you think? Should I make more videos like this? Or should I go back to being a faceless terrarium maker? Uh, this video took a lot more effort and it's a completely different thing from what I usually make. So, I would really appreciate it if you shared it and considered subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.